Hey y'all, it's Laura, and welcome to day five of my Scrap Timber Video A Day Marathon. This is a collaboration with the Scrappy Sisters and Christy's Beautiful Life with special guest Jen Gagney, who is Kai's mom on YouTube, and Melly Art Creates, who is on Instagram. We are going to be having a whole long list of lovely ladies who are joining in every single day, and everyone will be linked in the description box below. But we're getting started with this sketch that Christy picked out for each day. She's picked a sketch and we have chosen a prompt. So today's sketch was at the beginning of the video, and the prompt is a themed collection for a non-themed layout. So I'm using the March 2021 Very Easter themed hip kit for this 9 by 12 layout. Now obviously looking at these two photos, this is not an Easter layout. This is a 9 by 12 of my middle daughter, I guess. She's one of my twins, technically not the youngest, and she's loving on our big old chunky terrier. So I thought it would be really cute to use these bright colorful papers for these rather neutral photos. As you can see, my daughter's wearing black, my dog is brown, the furniture is brown, the walls are kind of a taupe. <laughs> There's not a lot of color happening in these photos. And the nice thing about that is it gives me the freedom to pretty much use whatever color scheme I want. So don't be afraid to mix up some very neutral photos with some wild and crazy colors. I really love the pops of yellow and green in these papers. And so that's really where I'm going to be focused on this one. I think that works really well to make your photos pop off the page because they are so different from the colors being used. Because we have these bright, beautiful colors, these heavy, neutral, sort of dark photos are gonna stand out because they don't blend in with those bright colors. So keep that in mind. Playing with contrast is something that's really fun in scrapbooking, so don't be afraid to step outside the colors that exist in your photos for your pages. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a trick here to use up this green scrap of paper. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that green is not one of my favorite colors. I don't mind it. I'm warming up to a lot of shades of green. I love mint. I love this kind of a, a deeper green. I like that. I'm just not a fan of a fluorescent green. I use it, but generally not as my main color. But if I had a choice, I prefer this more floral shade of green to bright green. <laughs> and so I'm using this green paper up to mat the floral paper, and then I'm going to create a banner down the center that will hold my photo. So that is the base foundation for my photos. This is a pretty simple sketch, and one of the things that I liked about it was that it's very clear because they've added some color to it. It's very clear what the layers are and in what order they go, and I really appreciate that. One of the issues I have having ADHD is that I have difficulty with depth perception in flat images. And so it's very difficult for me to convince my mind to process the different layers unless they're different colors. That is why you'll see several of my sketches added in this month to Scrap Timber, and they're all in color. And that's so I and anyone else can clearly see which layer goes on top of what and the order that they go to in the layout. And so I really liked that about this layout. It had a little bit of color and was able to see how things worked. I am using a branding strip here to create a second banner. Now in the original layout, it's kind of just a paper strip, but I wanted it to be a banner and I had to double it up so that it stood out on that background floral. So that's just gonna peek out underneath of my journaling spot. I am using two photos instead of three because I wanted a journaling spot and with this super busy background paper that wasn't gonna leave a lot of place, open space for journaling. And so by adding in a journaling spot instead of a third photo, that worked out really well and uh, gave me the freedom to add in lots of commenting because I always have a ton to say about my photos. Does that surprise anyone? No, no it does not. <laughs> if you're at all familiar with my channel, you know I'm a wordy girl and I always have a lot to say about mm, everything. So of course I have lots of journaling on almost all of my layouts, unless it's not something that has a big story and is fairly obvious from the photos what's happening. I generally do add quite a bit of journaling because I have thoughts, I have things I need to share. So reaching into the hip kit now, I'm pulling in some chipboard and then I have my condiment container here on the left that I just got from Amazon. And it is brilliant with those divided containers to split up your embellishments. So I have the acetate at the top 
I have some ephemera in the middle, and I believe I have some fussy cut florals in the bottom. Because I do a lot of fussy cutting, it's really helpful to have those embellishments broken up so it's not sifting through a giant pile of embellishments. I can quickly go to the type of embellishment that I'm looking for. So I'm adding this really pretty little scrolling design underneath of my journaling spot, which I think helped to cover up kind of that awkward space where the two photos in the journaling spot meet. It just had kind of a tough corner right there that was a little awkward, and so I went ahead and added that there. I'm going to put this little together acetate piece up at the top, and that I thought fit in quite nicely as a title. Even though it's small and it doesn't stand out in a big way, it still functions as the title. And keep that in mind, you don't always have to use great big thickers or large letter stickers to be your title. It can be something small. The point really is to give an introduction, if you will, to your journaling. And that's how I treat my titles. I either state something that's obvious, like, the dogs are in the picture, so I might say puppy love or something like that. But I may also use my title to lead into the journaling, and I do that quite often. So in this case, together, I'm obviously talking about the relationship between our dog and my daughter. Uh, I might use a lyric from a song or from a poem if I feel led to do that. That's often a great way to lead into your journaling as well. And so that's kind of how I see my title. It's not necessarily that it has to have a title. I just use it as kind of a, a lead in to the journaling. So I'm playing around with some fussy cut florals and these are quite large, which I was fine with because they needed to fill this awkward little space between my journaling spot and my photos. And of course, as I'm gluing things down, some things move around a little bit and that's okay. Things don't have to be perfectly where you place them the first time, but if you want them to be, a quick little tip is to take a photo of the layout, have it on your phone to look at for reference, and then go ahead and glue it down using that photo for reference where everything should go and how close it should be the photos, etc. Otherwise, you will find that that changes when you go to glue things down. Quite often things will get shifted and you won't quite, won't quite remember where it was supposed to be in the first place. I do that all of the time. Now reaching into this collection, there is a lot of spring themed things and I'm fine with that. I'm using a very floral background. I've got some floral fussy cut pieces, so I don't mind bringing in things like butterflies or more florals because even though there's nothing florally or even outside happening in these photos, I still think it helps to make them pretty. And as you can see, Yes, my layout is quite bright, but those photos definitely draw your eye in quickly because they're so different, because they contrast so heavily to that bright background that they still grab your eye and demand your focus. And that's always my intention with my scrapbooking is I want my photos to stand out. They are the whole purpose for the layout. So I definitely want them to be the first thing that grabs your eye because they're different. Now I'm pulling in some puffy stickers and these, as you can see from the little bit in the bottom there, we've got eggs, we've got bunnies, we've got florals, we have Easter words. And so I'm trying to obviously pick things that don't have an Easter theme to them even though the rest of the collection is, because this particular layout is not Easter themed. I do, however, feel like you can use a lot of the embellishments from a themed collection or kit on just about any layout. So don't feel limited by the overall theme and see what you can use that doesn't fall into that theme, or maybe you can use it differently. Like for example, my daughter, my youngest daughter has a pink bunny. And so I have scrapped in the past some photos of her and her pink bunny using some of the bunnies from this Easter collection. And so that is a kind of a clever way to use up those very specific icons on an unrelated layout. Finishing up, we're going to add some scattering and splattering. I am using some Gold Nouveau for some controlled splattering around the page. I've already added in those little puppy hearts and florals for my scattering. And then I'll come in with some Heidi Swap Color Shine for some gold splattering as well. And we should be finishing this layout up pretty quickly. I do hope you will check out all of the other wonderful ladies that are participating in this daily marathon. And we will have a new process video every single day day in September, so I absolutely cannot wait to hear what you guys think. It is absolutely my favorite part of the entire year, and this is my fourth year doing this September marathon, and I am beyond thrilled. I am going to do a little bit of outlining on the outside of this bottom 
piece of paper or cluster of paper. And that just gives it a nice little bit of shadowing and gives the impression of depth. So it doesn't feel quite so flat on the page when you add a nice little quick pen outline. It is a little bit tricky when you have a lot of things hanging over the edge of said paper. And I did have to pull out the title piece and then glue it back down to uh, get that outlining on there correctly. Acetate can be kind of tricky to incorporate, but I find if you can get it onto a white background, it's a whole lot easier to use. Upcoming still photos, and until next time, bye!